Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time, I want to thank Elder Franco for those wonderful words of admiration. God will do it again. Amen. And he can do it again in your life. So good to be in uh, Kaparo this afternoon, we the Seventh day Adventist Church. And I know that God is really, really good to us. Amen. Let's sing this, this, this wonderful chorus, Lord. I lift your name on high. Still follow him. Yes, 
So as Jesus walked the street, folks keep coming. Folks didn't understand what was going on, but they just followed because it is Jesus. So he went to Peter's house. Whose house? Yeah. To Peter's house. I've been to Peter's house. And it's not like how it used to be, but for tourism, they just have it. Part of the house. Uh, but the Bible says Jesus went inside of Peter's house. And folks didn't care who house it was. They just followed Jesus. Until inside the house, there was no more room, the Bible says. Not even room for a little child. They were jump packed on each other. And in the house, right up on the stage where Jesus was, the scribes and Pharisees and the doctors of the law, they went up on the stage with Jesus. Now they weren't there because they just wanted to follow Jesus. But they were there in case Jesus says something wrong. They will accuse him. So they were on the stage. But the Bible says on the outside there was a man that was sick of the palsy. And somebody says that the sickness of the palsy you got it because you have done something wrong. And because you have done this wrong you took it on, it set up the pressure. You got a stroke, and so you are deformed. Now I don't know what sin this man had committed, but first John 3 4 says that sin is a transgression of the law. Sin is disobedient to God's law. Sin is going against the Ten Commandments of God. Now I don't know if this man had other gods beside the God of heaven. I don't know if he had bowed himself to these gods. I don't know if he had taken God's name in vain. I don't know if he had broken the Sabbath. Wait a minute. You know, folks today, there are preachers today who will tell you that the Sabbath is abolished. Ladies and gentlemen, the worst people in the world today are not those young men who are killing each other in love and them. The worst people in the world today and not rural policemen in the force. The worst people in the world today are not parents who will train the children. The worst people in the world today are preachers. Because when a preacher could stand behind his podium and tell his congregation that the law of God is a punish, something is wrong with him. The law of God is the standard by which man ought to live. And even though they are saying that the law of God is abolished, they don't bow down to idols, they don't worship idols, they don't steal, they don't kill, they don't commit adultery, uh, they don't covet, they don't lie. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't keep the Sabbath. And the Sabbath reminds us that God created us. So why did God get rid of something that tells us that we were created in his own image, in his own likeness. Ladies and gentlemen, the love of God is a standard by which man ought to live. And let me tell you, don't try to keep God's ten commandments. You won't make it. It's like if I'm telling you to, to cut this iron in two. You won't go and get a, a sword that could cut wood to cut that iron in two. It don't have the same characteristic. So, so if you use a saw that, that, that to cut wood, to cut that, it wouldn't even put a dent. You have to get a saw that has the same characteristic. A hot saw, a chop saw, a cutting torch. Because it has the same characteristic of the iron. How can sinful me keep something that is so holy and righteous and good and perfect? I can't do it. I have to get somebody. Who are the same characteristic of the law? So I get Jesus. Amen. So, so Jesus is holy. His law is holy. The law is good. Jesus is good. The law is righteous. Jesus is righteous. The law is perfect. Jesus is perfect. So I don't fight up with the law. I just invite Jesus to come into my life. And the moment I does that, open. 
obedience follow. Amen. So I don't know what sin this man has committed. But ladies and gentlemen, it had gotten to him. And when you, when you, when you are messed up, and folks knows that you are messed up, and they wanted something bad to happen to you, and when it does happen, they will pass and look at you and say, you had it coming. You look for that. It's a long time now. This something like this should happen to you. And everybody passed the man by. Even Jesus passed by. And so the, the, the house was packed. Inside was, it was packed with people. And so now some folks were passing. And they said to themselves, couldn't, couldn't this man who is on the inside recover this man of the palsy? And so they decided that they will take the man to Jesus. Now I used to wonder how they got the man up there. They decided they will, because they went to the front door, and the front door, they pushed them back. There was no room. They tried the side door, and they pushed him back. And there's no room, but they were determined to get the man to Jesus. And he said that they will go on the roof of the house. Now I used to wonder how they got the man up there. I thought it had a tree next by, close by, that they put him up the tree and get him across. But when I was in Jerusalem, my friend, I found out that every home in Jerusalem to get to the top of the house, it had a narrow step on each house. So they got the man on top there. And they went right over the stage where Jesus was. Now if the scribes and the Pharisees, they thought that they were part of the show. But you see, if they had struck their strength, they would have known that pure religion and only fire before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep themselves unspotted from the world. But they didn't study their strength. They just wanted to be a part of the show. So they decided they will rip off the tiles. It's what we will call that nice today, but the tiles in those times are not those tiles that we put on our floors. They were big slabs of concrete that they interlock with each other that rest on some long concrete beam. And how they, they, they put on those, those tiles and they, they will fill the spaces with mortar so the roof wouldn't leak. And right over the stage, the show is about to start. You see, Jesus is the one who wrote the script. Yeah. Jesus went to Peter's house because he knows that the movie is about to start and he is the director of the movie. Yeah. So the show is about to start yeah. and right over the head of Jesus, they began to move the tiles. And there was a commotion now, the scribes and Pharisees that were there on the spot with Jesus to ready to accuse him. They began to move themselves. But Jesus stood still. Yeah. And the Bible says, they let down the man. Yeah. This man was let down all his life. Let down by his friends. Let down by society. Let down by his family. Let down by government. Let down by churches, let down by politicians. But this time, when they let him down, little he knew that he was about to get up. And my friends, this afternoon, the best place on earth to be when you are let down is at the feet of Jesus. Because at the feet of Jesus, there's hope, there is joy at Jesus' feet, there's solace at Jesus' feet, there is freedom from sin. So when they let him down, Everybody now was expecting Jesus to work a miracle. To tell the man, get up and walk. But Jesus knew that this man didn't need a miracle. He needed healing. You see, healing deals with the spiritual. A miracle deals with the physical. Lots of folks run to churches today because everybody 
need some miracle. But nobody wants to be healed. Nobody wants to be obedient to God's law. Nobody wants to follow what God says. Folks just want to live a certain kind of life. And at the end of that life, my friends, they say, well, I'm, I'm going to heaven anyhow. It doesn't work that way. You must be healed. You must be forgiven of your sins, ladies and gentlemen. Of your lawlessness. Of your law breaking. And so, Jesus looked at the man. When everybody was expecting Jesus to say, get up and walk. Jesus says, man, your sins be forgiven thee. That man didn't care if he couldn't walk anymore. He felt beautiful ashes. He felt a joy and a peace that passed all human understanding. He felt, he felt different because he was forgiven. And now, as Jesus forgave the man, that man wanted to leave because he had never heard words like all he was hearing all his life. It's good for you. You deserve what you are going through now. But here is somebody who forgave the man of his sins. The scribes and Pharisees and the doctors of the law. The Bible says they lived the move. But the reason in their hearts, who is this man yeah. that could forgive sins? Yeah. I can spend the rest of the afternoon telling you who this man is. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, some of us who do landscaping, uh, we, will, we will take our seeds and those seeds and we'll put it in, 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 in our pot and when it germinates and it comes up, we will we'll transplant them in the little cups or, 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 or trays and when it reaches a certain height uh, we will put them in the ground uh, and then we will take care of them and, and make sure they grow sometimes it takes years and, and months and years to get it the way you want it and then you hedge it so that you can get it how you want it but the God I'm talking about this afternoon he just spread and the mountain showed up he commanded and then he said the, the galaxies all over the universe showed up through his power. Yeah. Who is this man that can forgive sins? It's a God who loves us with an everlasting love. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't care what you have done, Jesus still loves you. Yeah. An afternoon like this, we have gone to one of our churches, we have spent the day, we have done. A lot of training with the, with, the, with the folks at the church. And, and after training, we had lunch. And then in the afternoon, we went out on the field, the homes, and we divide the church, the, the church into twos and trees. And we were going to every home and we were praying for people. We were praying for folks. And, and there were some East Indian guys who were lambing and some ladies lambing in the house. And uh, uh, while I'm walking, Two young people and my and, and brother John who was with, with us, they said, Let's don't go there, go so I said, No, let's go. And my friends, we walk in. The two young people stayed by the road. And I said, Good afternoon, you know, we from the Southern Adventist Church, and we are just in the, the area praying for families. And this young man, he's about 35 years, somewhere around there. He started to curse God. In the most obscene, he was cursing God. I said, man, I don't care how much you curse God, he still loves you. Yeah. He says, so and so, with God, and the kid throwing cursing. I said, I'm praying for you today. He said, look at, look at the highlight. You think any God give me that? He said, the universe give me that. I said, I don't care what you say. And those other folks, how I'm talking, I'm not talking rough to him. Those other folks, they were smiling and some of them were laughing. I said, I'm laughing at him. God loves him. Yes. And he kept on cursing. And so I want to pray for everybody here this afternoon. And so I went and I, I held his hand. I don't know if the power of God surged through him. Yes. But while I was praying, and the Bible said, What's I'm praying? So I peeped with one eye. And when I looked, I looked up, I saw his eyes closed and his head back. And I kept on praying. And I prayed for everybody. So after 
going to pray with the sight of me. And I looked at him and I said, you're going to make a good soldier for the Lord. He didn't curse God at that time. So we left. Next Sabbath, I accustomed taking off my phone in church. Or putting it on silent, leaving it in the car or the front or yeah, I, I, I put it in my bag. I'm sure I took off my phone. So I'm playing the guitar for soul service. My phone is ringing in my bag. I'm hearing my name tone. Yeah. And the church that was, they were singing, everybody gets said quiet. Yeah. And they were looking at me because I normally tell folks, take off your phone in church. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and when you get leaders to beat them, you will beat them. And so I mean, so, so, so I kept my head straight. But it kept on ringing. And so, I just sit my bar and I open and realize it's the elder from that church. So I asked the church to excuse me, but I never took over the guitar. And I went outside. He said, man, you remember that guy last week that really cursed God? I said, yes. He said, when his family came Thursday night, Brian us at our home. And he asked that if we can pray for him, he's in ICU, yeah, he's got a stroke. Yeah. To make a long story short, yeah. the same man who cursed God, my friends, he's a diehard seven of He's coming to the church in a wheelchair and he's spreading the word yeah. of God. When Jesus said, your sins be forgiven thee, yes. Jesus meant it, and the mind felt it. Lots of people, you're from young men in jail today, because somebody didn't forgive them. Yes. The husband who on the streets today, because some wife didn't forgive him, or some woman who's in somebody else's arms, because some husband didn't forgive them, some judge didn't forgive them. There are folks who are eating out of God's camps today, because somebody didn't forgive them. They don't just need a miracle. They need healing. And so that man, when Jesus said that, they said, who is this man? Jesus looked at them and he says, why reason in your heart? You see, Jesus can read the intent of our heart, the intent of our minds. Your lips don't have to move, but he knows what's going on in your heart. And in Kapara today, God knows who loves it. He knows what you are going through in your home. He knows you got a, a, a smoking problem and a drinking problem and a party problem, even a church problem. He knows what you are going through. And it's only when you surrender to God, yes, He can make a change in your life. Yes. So Jesus says, "Why, why, why the reason heart? Whether I can forgive, or I can say, take up your bed and walk. Yeah. And not only, not only can I heal a man, I can walk a man. But in fact, sir, take up your bed yes. Yes. and walk. Yes. That man felt electricity." Run to his back, up to his brain. Faith came alive, and the man leaped from the ground. They said, "Tell me that man stood." The same place. Listen, listen. The only time you become important is when Jesus comes into your life. You could have all the money and the riches in the world, everything that life could offer. Life is not what you have, but it's who you have. And when you have Jesus, you have life, and you have it all abundantly. And it's not where you are, but it's who you are, ladies and gentlemen. They did not room in the house. But they didn't pull the man back to the roof. They made a part. Jesus wasn't the star boy now. Yeah. He became the star boy. Huh? As he, he began to walk down the aisles. And then, yes, the body said, hey, yeah. you are the man, Mr. John. Yeah, Come on, give me a little step there. You are the man. You have good courage, man. And tears coming down his eyes as he reached outside. He was going home, leaping and jumping. I said, yes, somebody in the distance says, isn't that? It looked like? Yeah. Now, nah, it couldn't be. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. What's wrong with you, Mr. John? A 
I met a man called Jesus, a different man, a man who understands me, a man who understands my problem. I gave Jesus all my sorrow, and Jesus gave me joy. I said, Lord, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to you. Jesus said, I'm going to give you freedom from sin. I'm set him free. You're looking at me this afternoon, and you're wondering, who is this young man? I used to distrust people. I was in a jam at the age of 15 in 1979. Frustrated people. I got shot at. I was shot at. I, I shot at. I was stabbed. I was locked up. My friends, I know what it is. But I met a man called Jesus. And he changed my life. He set me free for that jam that I was in. 15. Uh, the three weeks after I was baptized and gave my life to, to Christ, the killer police invested me. But I thank God, He took me out and He set my feet on the rock to stay. How many of us ever travel the highway? How many travel the highway? You see records park up on goats on the highway. And you ask yourself, what are they doing there? They're looking for work. Hoping somebody, they're praying because everybody prays. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Belgrove prays. Yeah. If he doesn't pray, yeah. his business will go through. Yeah. Everybody prays yeah. because everybody loves and wants the dollar. Yeah. So they are praying on the highway. Hoping somebody shut them. They're praying for folks to die, hoping for a little accident because they need to take care of the family. And they will come to you. Look at you. They will take you to your destiny. But on this highway of life, there's a record that I know about. He don't pack up on the highway of life. He travels the highway of life. The Holy Ghost, he comes in your home, he comes in the school, he comes on your job. Whatever you are going through, when you are going through your problems and your issues and your crucibles, ladies and gentlemen, he meets you where you are. And when he finds you, he looks at you and you are in tears because you are stressed out. You are in tears because you can't pay the bills. You are in tears because uh, the, the, the wife is not faithful to the husband. is not faithful. They are in tears because some son is in jail. They look at you and, and, and the Holy Ghost looks at you and when he sees you, you trust him in them. The folks say, you're right off. You're on drugs. They say, there's no hope. You can't come back. Yeah, yeah. But the Holy Ghost has smiled. Yeah. Because he knows when he takes you up, he's getting you to the body straightener and the mechanic who is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And he takes you there. And when Jesus sees you, uh, you're crying. And Jesus has smiled because he knows that all you need, all my need, is a new heart. And so he, he puts in a new heart. And then he shakes you up. And after shaking you up, he puts you to dry. And then he sprays you down with his blood. And my friends, when you leave the manufacturer, you are not coming out there with, with four new spots. You're coming straight from the manufacturer. A brand new person. The things you used to do. You will do them no more. And the places you used to go, you will go there no more. And the books you used to read and the shows you used to look at, you don't do it anymore. Why? It's a great change yes, yes, yes. since you have been born. Yes, yes. Not a man called Jesus. Yes. I want to close with this story. I love it. A teacher. One stood before a class. In fact, the children were inside the classroom and they were making noise, spelling each other on the paper and pinching each other, just making noise. And the teacher came inside and she stood up. And as they began to settle down, you could hear a pin drop. When there was quietness, she began to relate to them a story. The story was so intriguing that you could see it and feel it on the students' faces. 
And so as she get close to the end of the story, the sleep part of the story, she just sat behind her desk, pretend as though she was reading something and all eyes were. Do you know that the end of the story is a sweet part of the story? Yes, sir. How many of us remember those days when there were no cards? When you used flambos and lamps and candles? Yeah. And our grandparents used to tell a story yeah. Yeah. around a little after six. Yeah. And because of the story, sometimes you want to use the latrine. Your sister, your brother will go with you. Yeah. And while you are doing your stuff, sometimes they will run and leave you and you will burst out. You remember those days? Yes, Correct. You burst out because yeah. you are actually hearing and seeing that story that you were told in your mind. Yes, yeah. As she reached close to the end of the story, she just sat on there until the child couldn't take it anymore. And one young man says, come on, miss. Tell us the rest of the story. And he began to pump the desk. Come on, miss. Come on, miss. Come on, miss. And she just stood up, and there was a hush. Then she said, all right, class. I want you to take your pens and your notebooks. And I want you to write in your own words how you believe the story ended. She said, I don't want nobody coming from the job. I want you to write the story how you believe it ended. And I bring this story to you this afternoon. After you have lived all your life, go to church all your life, have a party all your life, drink all your life, smoke away your life. My friends, how will your story end when you face God on the great judgment day? Will your story end safe in the arms of Jesus? Or will your story end? I've been found wanting and my sins have not been washed away. You alone can end your story, mister. Young lady, mothers and fathers, you alone can end your story. And folks believe, some folks believe uh, that, that, that when you die, it's over. It's not over. It's only over. When Jesus comes and you are told, depart from me. You want us of iniquity. I want my story to end safe in the arms of Jesus. What about you? Wherever you are, whether in your homes, even in the booth right here, in the school, in the grocery, wherever you are, the lady who's selling right there, those vegetables, how will you like your story to end? Will it end safe in the arms of Jesus? You want to say, Lord, I want my story to be end to end in your arms. Just put your hands in the air wherever you are and take it back down. God bless you. God bless you. Wherever you are, he's seeing those hands. And so with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, good God of love, we thank you for coming at our rescue. We thank you that you have made us part of your show. That the sickness of the policy this sin problem that has plagued the human race, only your blood can wash away all sins. And so in the name of Jesus, all those who have raised their hands in their mind, you know what's going through in their mind right now. Those young men that don't buy the grocery line in there. Those in the grocery that are here in the Those in their homes, wherever they are. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, deliver them. Don't just what a miracle of God heal their lives so they can be obedient to your ten commandments and the reason why Lord there's a judgment the reason why we have courthouse and magistrates and judges and jail and police and, and gun and handcuff and lawyers is because people keep breaking laws and the reason why there's a judgment is because somebody has broken your law but God you came to rescue us from the penalty of the law, which is death. So in the name of Jesus, forgive us. Forgive us of all sins. In 
cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Is there a mother right now who may be crying because her son or daughter has gone astray? Maybe somebody's on drugs. Oh God, and her heart burns within us. Within her. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will bring comfort and healing to her. Maybe right now there's a father who needs a job. Lord, he's trying to make ends meet. And so he's frustrated sometimes. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, provide a job, oh God. And not only provide it, but bring he give back to you and give his life to you, Lord, so that he can leave his family to you. But for young people of the land, young people of Kapao, those young, young people who, who is preparing for C exam, who, who are, 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 are the virtual platform, oh God, in the school work, oh God, open up your mind. Provide knowledge for them. There's a home right now who need a food basket of oh God in the name of Jesus. I pray that you'll fill the cover. Not only for them, but may they have enough to share with somebody in need. You have heard us. Thank you for the church, the Seventh Adventist Church that has come out here this afternoon to proclaim your word. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that they will not stop, but they will get to every Corn and village in Kapow and spread the good news of Jesus. You have heard us today. Thank you for the songs. Thank you for your will. So we give you all the praise. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Amen.